Today I want to talk about two things. Uh, I want to talk about how Madison Avenue is going to die and why it's going to die and why Boston is going to become the next Madison Avenue and how we're going to bury those guys in New York. Who's with me? All right. <laughs> Tap it across. What do you think of this slide? Nice looking slide, isn't it? Don Draper. Don Draper's playbook was he would get an account and uh, he would do some creative for them, and he made his money, essentially, by pushing that creative through television channels. That's 90% of the revenue. It turns out that's essentially the same exact business model that all the big Madison Ave firms have today. Do a little creative, funny jingle, funny ad, push it through television channels, and crank it, uh, crank it as much as you can. The problem is that their business model is starting to really break. Uh, the way humans sort of live and shop and learn is radically different. Like I think of myself when I was growing up, and uh, every night at uh, every night at 5:30, uh, my mom and I would watch All in the Family and would sit down. We are, we are Irish Catholic, and when an Irish Catholic household, you get a nice couch. And when you're Irish Catholic, you've got plastic on the couch. Any of you have the plastic on the couch? You'd sit down the plastic and watch All in the Family, and once the ad came on, you didn't have a clicker, you couldn't change the ad, so you watched the ad, and you only had seven stations. You had two, two sucked, four, five, seven, 38, 56, and so you're kind of stuck there, and the model worked really well, but over time, the model is working less well. So Madison Avenue, the business model, I think, is really starting to break, just starting now, and I think we're at the beginning of a major slide of a giant industry and a giant regional center, okay? Um, the key stat for me is that TV ad revenue was down a whopping 17% year over year from 2010 to 2011. I don't foresee this thing turning around. I think it continues to go down. I think this puts major pressure on the Madison Ave folks and really starts to crack their model. And you might ask why? Why is that crashing so much? And in my opinion, there's a couple specific reasons. First, DVRs. Who's got a DVR? All right. The only time I don't use my DVR is when I'm watching the Red Sox lose and I'm watching a political debate. Uh, that's pretty much the only time I don't use my DVR. I always use my DVR. And I think the rest of the co country is starting to do the same thing. Half of the country's television sets have DVRs. The, the amount of, of television viewed through DVRs is up 5x over the last five years. So it's re really, that's the kind of first nail in the coffin for the uh, Madison Ave folks. The second nail in the coffin is the subscription economy is really on the rise. Who uses Netflix? Apple TV? Okay. Here's my prediction. A year and a half from now, I'm going to ask the same question. Everyone's going to use Apple TV because the big project that Apple will release in the next year or so is a integrated sort of DVR television, computer, all this stuff together, and Apple's really big on the subscription economy where you rent stuff versus uh, watch ads. So I suspect there's a big, big shift towards the subscription economy. I use Apple TV and Netflix a lot. I just don't watch ads. It's two bucks a, a TV show. It's just worth it. Um, interesting stat. The number of homes with broadband um, and, and have a television but don't have cable it, it is quite interesting. Uh, I've noticed the young folks at HubSpot, I would guess about half of them have televisions at all, uh, but there's this big trend towards, I've got a TV, but the TV is not for watching sort of cable with ads and all that stuff. So the model, that's sort of the third nail in the coffin. So I sort of think my thesis behind this, pre this presentation is if I could, I would short sell Madison Avenue. Really don't think the model is gonna work and I think it's gonna crash. What I'm really excited about is what's going into Boston. Uh, lots of interesting marketing stuff happening here in Cambridge, lots of interesting marketing stuff in Boston. If I could buy shares in Boston, Massachusetts, I would buy shares in Boston, Massachusetts. If I could sell shares in Madison Ave, I would sell shares in Madison Avenue. And what makes me think that? Well, marketing's sort of shifting in my mind from an industry where your success is a function of the width of your wallet to an industry where your success is a function of the width of your brain. And there's lots of big brains in Boston. We're very good at this. It's shifting from a paid media industry towards an earned media industry. And Boston's got the big brains behind this. And, uh, and I'm very excited about that. So here's sort of a, a, a brief, these are the ones I could, uh, so last night I was watching the, uh, 
I was watching the debate, and I made these slides while I was watching the debate, but this is the list I could come up with of Boston's sort of best-selling authors and thinkers, and it's very interesting. David Meerman Scott, he wrote a book called New Rules of PR and Marketing. It's the number one selling marketing book ever, lives in Lincoln, Massachusetts. Josh Burnoff is at Forrester, wrote a great book with Charlene Lee, a runaway bestseller. Chris Brogan wrote a couple best-selling books. Um, he lives up in Newburyport. Uh, Dharmesh Shah lives in uh, Brookline, wrote a best-selling book. David Weinberger, very interesting guy. He's at the Harvard Berkman Center. Very interesting marketing think tank in Boston, one of the most interesting in the world. He wrote the Clue Train Manifesto, maybe the bar's best marketing book ever written. Um, Steve Krug wrote the book uh, Don't Make Me Think, brilliant marketing book. So lots of great marketing thinkers. Some of the world's biggest thinkers about where the future of marketing is headed are here in Boston. Larry Weber, Dave Balter, so many of them are based here in Boston. Uh, very different from New York City, very different from California. New marketing platforms. Turns out Bar Mar uh, Boston's the center of the universe for these new emerging marketing platforms. Great company out in Waltham called Constant Contact. This is a company I love based in Cambridge called HubSpot, number one inbound marketing software. Uh, there's a business called Unica that's based out in Waltham. IBM bought it, but that's, they're number one in the enterprise marketing management platform for big companies to manage their marketing. A uh, great company out in, the, in uh, I think it's Woburn, called Demandware. It's the number one sort of e-commerce platform. They do e-commerce for like J. Crew and Gap and Victoria's Secret and huge brands like that. They run the platform. Brightcove, Jeremy Allaire's company, number one sort of video hosting company in the world. So we're building the platforms here to enable the next generation of marketing. I think it's really exciting what's going on here. And it's a real cluster that... Uh, I think, I think is really cool. Lots of interesting marketing tech companies here that, that are on their way up. Visible Measures, awesome company that makes video analytics. They're doing really well, venture-backed software company. Acquia makes content management systems. They're the sort of front end for the Drupal open source content management system. DataZoo, really cool ad tech. JumpTap is a mobile marketing platform. Brainshark, Kinvi, goes on and on and on. Lots of cool startup tech companies in the marketing industry in Boston. There's something very special happening here. We're, real bu we're building the next generation platforms uh, that they're gonna take over from Madison Ave. People with me so far? Okay, I'm almost done actually. <laughs> marketing service firms, great marketing service firms here like Hill Holiday and Digitas started here. These firms in Boston were on the cutting edge. They're transforming the models for these big, big agencies, and they're doing great work. Guy named uh, Edward Botches at Mullen, super, super thoughtful guy on new technology inside of these, uh, these giant agencies. It's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot. Marketing events and organizations, MyTex, great organization, largest organization of its time, Ad Club, AMA, big conferences like Future M, great conference called Inbound, love that conference. Uh, marketing Profs, the Inbound Marketing Summit going on right now. Awesome, awesome, awesome futuristic marketing conferences going on. Okay. So here's my, I'm going to conclude here with my, my final thoughts here. Uh, I grew up here in Boston. I grew up in a town called Westwood. And when I was growing up in Boston, uh, we dominated. We dominated the hardware industry. We had a company called Digital Equipment and Apollo Computers and Wang and uh, Data General. We were, you know, we were the guys when I was growing up. My dad was a tech guy here. He worked at BBN. And we were, it was America's technology highway, right? And what's happened? It's really fucking pissing me off what's happening. These fuckers in Silicon Valley are kicking our ass. Hardware. What do we have? We got EMC. That's it. We pretty much lost that whole industry. We missed the PC revolution. We missed the workstation revolution that happened, uh, which is really a pity. Networking. We had Bay Network and Sycamore, all these awesome you know, networking companies. Ah, Cisco dominates that industry. Really pisses me off. Enterprise software. Yeah, we have a bunch of big, interesting companies around here, but now all the center of gravity is shifting to California. You've got Workday, Salesforce.com, Oracle. We're all out there in the valley. I'm drawing a line in the sand today. I'm sick and tired of it. By 2020, what I'm really nervous about is I'm convinced that Silicon Valley uh, is going to compete with us for the future of, uh, of the marketing industry. I'm convinced that Madison Avenue will crash, the whole business model will crash. What I don't want is to lose to the fuckers out in Silicon Valley. So I'm drawing the line here. 
Boston, let me hear it. Boston will win this war. By 2020, we're going to win the marketing battle. Let me hear it. All right, all right. Uh, all right, so here's my calls to action for everyone. Start a marketing company. Who started a marketing company in here? All right, I like it. Join a marketing startup. Great idea. Angel invested in a marketing company. Who, any angel investors out there? All right, after your marketing startup does great, you need to angel invest in some, some uh, little ones. Who's part of MyTex? Who's a MyTex member? Everyone should join MyTex. Awesome organization. Hire locally marketing interns and students. At HubSpot, we got 400 people now. In the early days, we were real snobs about who we hired. We hired all these kids from MIT and all these kids from Harvard. You know who rocks at HubSpot? The kids from Emerson and BU. Fantastic, world-class marketing programs. Better than the programs at MIT and Harvard. Go and hire interns and go and hire marketers from Emerson and BU. I'm sure there's other programs out there that are great, but those two are awesome. So those are my calls to action to go out there and turn Boston into the next generation Silicon, uh, next generation Madison app. Actually, that's all I've got. <laughs> really short. Yeah, HubSpot 3 is doing great. Uh, company is doing great. We're, we grew 90% year over year the last quarter, and we came up with a new product called HubSpot 3, and it's about how do you pull people into your funnel using inbound marketing and then pull them through your funnel using inbound marketing by making sort of very personalized web experiences and mobile experiences and, and uh, email experiences. That's sort of the future of inbound marketing. It's using content to pull people in in context, personalization, to pull people through your funnel. That's where HubSpot's headed. Yes, ma'am. Well, first of all, I think you're right. We are losing lots of talent. Uh, a lot of the MIT and Harvard kids, uh, particularly the startup kids, move west. What I'd like to do is when, a, when you're interested in marketing, let's say you're a Sloan student or you're at Babson or you're at wherever you're going, you're at BU, and you're thinking about what to do and you want to be in the marketing industry, there's just all these companies and all this stuff going on in Boston, like this is the place to go. And you graduated from a university in New York or Indiana or anywhere around the country. If you want to be in the marketing industry, I want you to move here. Part of that is FutureM, part of that is MyTex, part of that is these big platform companies. I'm trying to make that a much more attractive value prop. I feel like we've lost, I hate to say this, because Scott Kersner is going to flame me for it, but I feel like we've lost sort of the tech war against the valley. I don't think we can win that back in the next, let's say, seven years. But I feel like there's a major, major battle around marketing uh, that's up for grabs at, at, as, uh, as Madison Avenue dies. And I'd like to win that. And I think we've got a shot at winning it. Um, and part of it is attracting more students and keeping folks who are geeked out about marketing and the next generation of marketing. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I, for some reason, I don't think of Silicon Alley and Boston as sort of uniting and, and beating uh, uh, Silicon Valley. I probably should, though. Um, how do you think about it? Do you think about it that way? Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know the answer to your question. In terms of the service companies and the software companies working together in Boston, there's a lot of that happening, actually. Like HubSpot works with a bunch of these big service providers. Demandware does. I think there's a lot of synergy there. It's like these hubs form. Like Boston was a hub for mini computers. And then there's disruption happened. And workstations happened and PCs happened. And we, and we were there at the workstation, then we lost it, and we missed the PC altogether. So there's this disruption happening in marketing from old school advertising to this new sort of inbound, call it whatever the hell you want. And I want to be here, and I want to win that, and I don't want to give up ground, and I want to fight. And to do that, we need the platform companies to stay and grow. We need start, a startup ecosystem to happen. We need the students, we need to be a magnet for students. When anyone interested in marketing, here is the hub. Just like if you're interested in financial services, you go to Wall Street. If you're into movies, you go to Hollywood. I want to make Boston that. I think we have a shot. I don't want to blow it. Any other brilliant questions? <laughs> okay, that's all I've got. Thanks, everybody, for coming today.